how bad of a place is Congress to work? Let me ask that again. How bad of a place is Congress to work that one influential representative is packing it in to become, of all things, a member of the media? As the chairman of the powerful House Intelligence Committee, Mike Rogers is already a media fixture. He's ever present across the Sunday talk show landscape. He gets quizzed on everything from the drone war in Yemen to the NSA's mass surveillance programs. But the Michigan Republican has decided not to seek an eighth term. He's trading his access in the clandestine world for the very public one of radio hosts. For Cumulus Media, he'll be joining right-wing radio stars like Mark Levin, Michael Savage, and Don Imus. I've been wanting to talk with Rogers about his decision ever since his deal with Cumulus was announced. And I recently had the chance to meet him in Washington and ask, why radio and why now? Congressman, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Tell me about why you decided that radio was the next step for you. Well, it wasn't something I was looking for. I'm, you know, as the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, it's a huge responsibility. The 16 intelligence agencies, all the budgeting, all the oversight, all the policy work, uh, all the real-time checkoffs that we participate in and covert action and other programs. Uh, so I have a six-year term. I've been, this will be my fourth year, been on the committee for 10 years. And somebody came to me and said, hey, have you ever thought about radio? Maybe to, in order to better broadcast out the kinds of things that you think are important. Uh, it, it got me thinking, and it got me uh, to a point, and, and I think what won it for me uh, was when they said, listen, we don't want a radio talk show host. We want a guy with your experience talking about the things that you believe are important on the radio. Hmm. That sold it for me. That, that I, I think, really was made it interesting for me in this option to talk to literally millions of people uh, every, you know, every week across the country. Hmm. Doesn't your job right now, though, give you that same ability? Well, you know, I have a lot of influence in the one lane that I have, which is this intelligence lane as chairman of the Intelligence Committee. And then I do a lot of speaking on foreign affairs and public policy and, and foreign policy. Um, and so, you know, I have that uh, lane and certainly that authority. But I'm very worried about the isolationism that's creeping into my party, the Republican Party, and that exists in the Democrat Party. We have tried this in America before. It's always ended up badly for us. And I, I don't see a counterweight out there in a national daily dialogue on why that's a bad idea and why Americans' prosperity is really tied to in, uh, a robust engagement policy around the world. And I think I'm, they've given me a forum to have that conversation in a way I can't do it today. Whenever a politician moves to the private sector, I wonder if it says more about Congress or about the private sector. Where does it come down for well, you? Well, probably both. Uh, certainly the pay is better in the private sector. Uh, it, but, you know, there's, it was a factor, not the factor. I mean, Congress can be an incredibly frustrating place. Right, that's what I wonder is if you yeah. just felt you couldn't, you know, and, and I've, I've worked make in, change anymore. I, I've worked in a bipartisan way on our committee. I work very closely with my Democrat ranking member, a guy named Dutch Ruppersberger from Maryland. We work very well together on major national security issues in that committee. And unfortunately, it's a rare thing in Congress. I, I, you know, I'm a conservative guy, but I'm a Reagan Republican. Believe if you can get 80 percent, you take it. Get up the next day and fight for the other 20 percent. That that plat that uh, that notion seems to be missing from Congress today. I bet people have asked you since you announced you were retiring and going to radio. Are you viewing yourself as the next Rush Limbaugh, the next Sean Hannity? Is there a comparison here? No, I don't think so. I, I, as I've told people I'm not trying to compete with Rush Limbaugh or Sean Hannity or Michael Savage. They have their own shtick, uh, and it works extra, uh, extremely well for them. They have loyal listeners. I'm not trying to take any listeners away from anybody. Radio is growing every year. I know every year people say, oh, radio is dead. You know, it's it's going to go away. Radio has actually been growing every single year. Uh, and I think that there are lots of viewers out there looking for something that's a little more engaging, uh, a little more challenging, learn, learn a little mm -hmm. something when I turn off the radio, uh, and that this just isn't there today. They're not meeting that demand. So I, I think they'll, they'll continue to prosper in radio, and I think this is a way for, for me to find this new niche that will also allow me and, and that, that kind of message to prosper in radio. You talk about the ratings. Some individual programs seem to have had a very hard time though, even though the medium is healthier than, than it's perceived to be. I mean, Mike Huckabee was a cumulus host. That show did not perform very well in the ratings. It has since been, been ended. What's your takeaway from programs like that, like his, for example? Well, again, it was, there's lots of people who want to try to fill that void of, the, of going after that segment of radio yeah. listeners. Yeah. Now, Rush Limbaugh is the king of it. He's you know, 16 million listeners a week. 
Uh, nobody's going to touch that. Uh, Sean Hannity has a really healthy uh, listenership every week. And so people were trying to go in and, and emulate those shows and compete head to head with them on the very same kind of show. I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. I, I, my show is not going to look like three hours of, of the monologue that, that uh, uh, Rush Limbaugh can do. And nobody, I think, can do that. Nobody pulls that off like Rush Limbaugh. Did you hear what Bill Maher had to say when you announced? I, I, I heard the clip. I you didn't. Heard the, uh, he, called, he said it makes perfect sense because the GOP has kind of become talk radio. He called it an echo chamber where people are not interested in actually legislating or compromising or fixing America, just in screeching about how liberals have ruined it. And then he said, so why not do it on the radio? He said, the money's better. And what was your reaction to Bill? <laughs> well, Bill Maher has his own shtick. You're going to be getting uh, in lots of these fights, aren't you, once you're a talk radio host? I, well, you know, I'd, I'd be interested in having that fight with Bill Maher on the radio. I think that'd be great because <laughs> uh, I think he's wrong on so many things. But, you know, the, the interesting thing uh, about that uh, is that my list of accomplishments is long. So this is my 20th year of elected office. Uh, and and it, I think we have moved the needle on a lot of issues, everything from cybersecurity and some health care stuff I worked on to to uh, server farm efficiency, believe it or not. Mm. All of those things that I've been able to get done. So at some point in your career, and I believe in a citizen legislature, I had to make the determination, can I have a imp broader impact by talking to more people than I can talk to as chairman of the House Intelligence Committee? Mm. I believe that, and that's why I disagree with him so passionately, and for a guy, by the way, who engages in politics using TV as a medium to do that, um, that radio was a, an important way to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. And it's not, you know, I, I, I understand, I think, what he's trying to say, which is don't turn off his show and turn on someone else's, right? Ah. Uh -huh, there it is. I think that's what it was. But in this case, you know, all of it added up. So my frustration with what I know is going to be a fairly difficult two years in order to get anything done, and I think the environment in Congress is sour a little bit that way, and unfortunately so. I think it's an important institution. Can I help that institution? Can I help formulate um, uh, and, and give people information so that they can come to a conclusion about where they ought to be on certain issues? Because only messages I hear out there, especially in talk radio, is an isolationism bent. Uh, and is if you don't get 100% of what you want, you're not really a conservative mm. uh, and go home. And I just think all of that's wrong. I think as, con as a conservative, we have lost the, uh, we, you know, there's certain programs we wanted to reform, but because we had a strong group that said if we don't get 100%, we want nothing, and guess what we ended up getting? Nothing. Mm. And so I argue we left lots of savings on the table because of that attitude, meaning that we could have done so much to take uh, to reform government, get spending under control, reform some of these programs, but you can't do it if you're not working as a team. But does the talk radio audience want to hear that? We're going to find out. I think they are, because the only message that they get, remember, a lot of people have the other message. Well, I think Cumulus tried with Mike Huckabee and Geraldo. Uh, well, I think Geraldo's staying in New York and doing a more local show in New York, and that's great. Uh, I think Huckabee had his own style. This is a different style. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to tell you, sit here today and tell you it's going to be wildly popular. I think that there's an interest. From all of the people I've talked to anecdotally, people are ready for this. And Cumulus thinks so too. Well, they're, they're taking a bet, and I'm taking a bet with them. I think it's going to work. I'm betting that it's going to work. Uh, and I think you could, again, it has to be entertaining. It has to be compelling. Uh, and I believe that smart controversy uh, works. And let me give you a great example. The, mm. the NSA is a substantive conversation. Uh, is you know, is what, where, what is the status of American surveillance? Now, on a lot of talk radio, I hear absolutely incorrect information. It works great. People love it. They call in and say, yeah, the mm -hmm. government's spying on me. I happen to be the guy that knows the answer to those questions. I'm going to challenge the listeners. They're going to challenge me. I'm going to bring on uh, guests that know those answers. The former director of the NSA has already agreed. He said, hey, if you have a show, I'm coming on, right? Keith Alexander. That, to me, that's smart controversy. Congressman, thank you so much for being here. Hey, thank thanks you. for having me.